you know, you've, you've done many experiences and you've experienced many things and you've lived life to an extent fully. Would you agree with that? Yeah, but I think that's, you know, again, this hopefully will be true for most of us. Right. If we are in a privileged enough situation. That, you know, mm. I mean, there are a lot of people in the world who are not anywhere near as lucky as we are as far as where they live or where they've been born or what kind of uh, environment they find themselves in. And, and that's actually one of the sad things in the human condition. Um, although I think it's, I'm an optimist, you know, I'm a kind of an eternal, I think it has actually improved. I mean, the average wealth actually on, on, of people in the world is actually much higher now than it was in the 60s. If you just look at objective measures of how people do. And so even though it's always easy to focus on, there are also people who do badly, right? Unlike us who are lucky. All in all, actually, humans are trying to, I think, make things better for themselves and mm -hmm. are even to some decent extent exceeding. So I feel, actually, I don't feel too cynical about this, even though there's plenty of bad places you can point to in the world. Mm. And then along with that, do you, have you found new meaning or what do you think is the meaning of all of this, I guess. I mean, yeah, you just that's, it's, it's, you know, I mean, as you can tell probably from how I fairly quickly answer certain questions uh, about whatever, you know, uh, do you believe in free will or whatever, I've thought about <laughs> all of these subjects a lot. And, and some of these things, you know, they just have to come to you like by epiphany. Uh, for example, my, my sister is uh, now quite religious and she makes no, makes no secret on it, so it's not like I'm hiding anything in her blog. But uh, she was not always. She was like me, really much more of an a-religious, and you know, let's try to explain things by uh, quantum measurement mm. <laughs> and see where that where that gets us. But she actually literally had an epiphany one day and and felt there's you know like there is somebody there that that you know, uh, had, you know well maybe not simulates the universe, but you know, right, right, you know. right. And, and she had that feeling all of a sudden, and she still does, and she knows she has it. And she can't really explain to me why it was there mm -hmm. one day and not the day before. So I think people come to realizations throughout their lives of things where you realize suddenly something, uh, and, and then you, and you feel it's true. Uh, and it could go either way. I, mean, people, I've, I know also people who have gone the opposite way. They were mm -hmm. quite religious, and then suddenly somebody fell from them, and they, they, are, they are no longer, and they're missing it even if, in some cases. So it's, it's quite interesting. Uh, but I think it's very unpredictable. Like in the end, uh, I think we use that phrase or used it of "you know it when it happens." Right? I think that's the best I can say. There is, you know, that when when you know, you know. <laughs> mm. How would your perspective change? I mean, from what you said, you're probably not very religious. But how would your perspective change? Your your science, your work change if you one day had this epiphany of believing in God? I wouldn't God even be able to tell you, right? Because you know, if you had to guess, it's something. If yeah. I ha if I had to guess. Um, I mean, it, it, to some extent, it would probably give me more comfort in some ways than I have right now, right? I mean, if I really believe that there is an entity out there that actually cares uh, about me specifically, uh, uh, that has like that gigantic wisdom and, and oversight and overview over everything, uh, it would be pretty nice. Uh, uh, in, in fact, one of the reasons I, you know, I mentioned earlier in the discussion that I was at one point interested in becoming a uh, church organists, right? But church organists typically work in churches and they play for congregations. Right. And one of the reasons in the end I decided not to do that, besides the fact that the music students really were way <laughs> better at it than, than I was, was that I really feel that if you're going to do that as a job and you're going to play for a congregation and for me, you really should be able to feel that exactly. as well. And if you don't, then you're just playing the music, mm. you know, but you're not really feeling it. And that's why I felt that that was not a right place mm. uh, for me to go. So. So the answer to answer your question, you know, if I suddenly had that epiphany my sister had, maybe I would actually take a pipe organ <laughs> and go to church, right? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, it's, but I can't, it's impossible to tell because these are like life-changing events and you have few of them, right, in a lifetime. Um, and it's very hard to predict how you are actually mm -hmm. going to respond to that, right? I mean, maybe I would do something totally different than what I kind of just made up, right? Who knows? It's that, that serious business and it's totally, it's very difficult. To, it's unpredictable. <laughs> like you said, and that's like, if, if there's one thing you're certain of, yeah. is that's the one thing. Unpredictability <laughs> is the one thing I am certain of. Yes. Like change is the only constant. So, yes, change is the only constant. It's the good old way of, mm -hmm. of, of saying it. And I think I have uh, enough of an understanding of, of like, you know, quantum mechanics and classical mechanics and various other theories that are even at higher levels or even at you know, lower levels now, that that's what gives me that confidence that that's probably true. Uh, I mean, again, not absolute certainty, but that's probably as close to anything that I am certain of. Uh, 